द फोर्थ किंगडम दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज किंगडम प्लांटी और प्लांट किंगडम किंगडम प्लांटी एंड किंगडम एनिमेलिया दिस वी हैव टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल्स सो नाउ आई विल जस्ट गिव यू द ओवर व्यू नेक्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस ऑल द क्लासेस अंडर किंगडम प्लांटी एंड किंगडम एनिमेलिया जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ एन ओवर व्यू नाउ यू रिमेंबर दैट दे आर ऑटोट्रॉफिक दे आर मल्टी सेल्युलर they have chlorophyll for food making and most important point is they have cell wall so the four points just as a mark of an introduction to kingdom plant is they are autotrophic that is they can prepare their own food by themselves they are multicellular that is they are having huge number of cells and the cells are divided as per the division of labor that is this cell will do this work this group of cell will do this work and making that tissues you know that chlorophyll for food making that is a green colored pigment containing magnesium so the next one is the cell wall the cell wall is the most important and distinctive feature of that of the plant kingdom because animal kingdom lacks cell wall okay and the last point is they are mostly immobile yes all plants are immobile no plant can move okay so i can directly write they are immobile okay they are immobile that is can't move can't move or immobile as a mark of introduction to that of the kingdom animalia they are lacks cell wall heterotrophic multicellular so as an overview to kingdom animalia they lack cell wall that is they do not have any cell wall they have only cell membrane they have cell membrane only you know after cell wall cell membrane comes we, you have already learnt in chapter 5 that is cell chapter then you have heterotrophic that is no animal can make their own food they are dependent upon that of the plants they are multicellular that is there are many number of cells for doing different works they are mostly mobile why i have written mostly because while studying we will find some animals are not that mobile they are sedentary sedentary means they are static in their position so now we are going to start up kingdom plantae in details kingdom plantae okay there are three bases of classification on the virtue of which the plant kingdom was divided so before going into that let us again revise the basic characteristics we have learned just now first one that they are autotrophic they are having chlorophyll they are multicellular they are having distinct cell wall and they are mostly immobile or they are immobile so in kingdom plantae you are going to learn about five different classes remember i told you kingdom then phylum then classes so kingdom is plantae now we are going to learn about the phylums in case of plants instead of phylum it is said divisions okay so there are five divisions under plant kingdom before going into the five divisions of plant kingdom we must know what is the basis of this five divisions there must be some platform there must be some basic reason on the virtue of which these five divisions were made so there are three criteria okay there are three criteria what are the three criteria the first criteria is cell structure or cell differentiation second one is presence or absence of vascular tissues and the third one is so now we are going to discuss about the fourth kingdom according to our sequence that is kingdom plantae and in a better detailed manner 
As I've already told you that in the hierarchy of biological system, after kingdom, what we get is phylum. But in case of plants, a bit difference is there. Phylum is said to be divisions. So there are five divisions under kingdom planty. Now, there must be some basis on the virtue of which these divisions are made. These bases are the three points I have mentioned over here. The first point is plant structure or plant differentiation. What does it mean? It means that whether that particular member of the plant kingdom are having proper roots, they are having proper stem, they are having proper leaves, they are having flowers, fruits, which are said to be the basic modalities for an organism to be called as plant. So the first point is plant structure or plant differentiation, which means that there should be definite vegetative structures that is root, stem, leaves, whether it is present or not present will be the first basis for classification. I am clear? The next point is presence or absence of vascular tissues. As we have already learned in the tissues chapter in chapter 6, previous one, that there are two types of plant tissues, permanent and complex. The complex plant tissues are xylem and phloem. You have already learned the functions as well. The xylem and phloem are the vascular tissues in the plant. The xylem and phloem are the vascular tissues in the plant. Okay. Why it is said to be the vascular tissues? Because xylem and phloem helps in the conduction of water and minerals from one part of the plant to another part. We will discuss it in details. So xylem and phloem is the vascular tissues of the plant or conducting tissues of the plant. I am adding one word more because in some books you may get the word conducting so you may not get confused vascular or conducting and the last point is presence or absence of covered seeds or only seeds whatever you consider presence or absence of seeds are the three bases on virtue of which these five divisions of plant kingdoms are manufactured so first point is plant structure or differentiation second point is presence or absence of vascular or conducting tissues and the last point is presence and absence of the covered seeds the first division under plant kingdom is thallophyta and as we know whenever we are going to start something in biological subject then you should know the terminologies. So thallo means thallus and phyta means plants. So the plants with thallus like body is called thallophyta. What do you mean by thallus? Thallus means undifferentiated structure. What does thallus mean? Means unstructured. Undifferentiated structure means what? Undifferentiated means that you cannot distinguish the root, the stem and the leaves. Okay. I'm just making one diagram to make you understand that. Say this is a generalized plant. This is the leaves, this is stem, and this is, I think you have guessed correctly, root, and this is flower. If you want to show a bit more, this can be a fruit, Sipsella fruit. This type of fruit is called Sipsella. What, what is it called? Sip Sena. Okay. Not, not required for your syllabus. So, this is the general angiospermic plant. We are going to learn about angiosperms. So, this is differentiated, but in case of Thallophyta, neither this type of leaves are present, nor so distinct roots are present, neither stem is present. It's a homogeneous structure comprising of everything. So you cannot say which is root, which is stem and which is leaf. So it is undifferentiated structure. So the first point under Thallophyta is they have undifferentiated structure. The second point is about their habitat that they are found in moist places. So you may note the second point under Thallophyta is they are found in moist places. The third point under Thallophyta is they are autotrophic in nature. 
they are autotrophic in nature that is they can make and prepare their own food and the reserved food material is starch and the reserved food is starch that is they are autotrophic they can make their own food and after making their own food they store it in the form of starch that is a carbohydrate you know about starch so first is undifferentiated structure then is moist places they are found and the third one is that they are autotrophic and they store food in the form of starch the fourth point is they have cellulosic cell wall they have cellulosic cell wall as we have already know that all the members under plant kingdom are having cell wall so thallophyta is also having cell wall and that cell wall is made of cellulose cellulose is also a kind of complex substance okay the fifth point under thallophyta is they are having simple and single celled sex organs what are they having simple and single celled sex organs simple and single celled sex organs means the sex organs like male sex organ and the female sex organ are very simple and they are one celled that is made of only one cell unicellular so the five points in the thallophyta you should incorporate in your brain they have undifferentiated structure they are having moist places as a habitat they are autotrophic and the food they store is starch they are having cellulosic cell wall and the last point is they are having simple and single celled sex organs the examples in the thallophyta is cara spirogyra eulothrix volvox these are all examples of thallophyta cara spirogyra eulothrix volvox okay. one question which is usually asked in examination for one mark question that is what is the common name of thallophyta the common name of thallophyta is algae the common name of thallophyta is algae this is very important to remember if i go by the examples then volvox Spy Eurothrix, Pyrogyra, they are all photosynthetic in nature. They can make their own food. And one example of a very famous thallophyte is Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas. Volvox is the only colonial thallophyta in this entire group. That is, they form colony. One Volvox you cannot never find. Volvox are always found together. Whereas they are found single as such. So, here we stop with that of the five important characteristics of thallophyta along with the examples.